Alright guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to upgrade the firmware on the internal multi-protocol module on the Jumper T12 Pro. This will probably also work for the uh, T16 Pro as well with the internal multi-protocol module, although the obviously the screens and the buttons and everything are going to be a little bit different, but the procedure is going to be uh, pretty much the same. So first off, you want to go to this website, it's called multimodule.org and you want to go to the firmware download page. I'll link that down in the description and you can go directly. Um, on that page, you're going to have to select the module that you're going to be wanting to upgrade. Now, the Jumper T12 Pro is not on there yet. It probably will be by the time you see this video at some point in the near future. But uh, if you select Jumper T16 Pro, that will work just fine. That's what I did uh, for my upgrade and uh, you can get the file that way. So you want to select Jumper T16 Pro for the module, and then over on the right, on those um, drop-down menus, you want to make sure you select the correct channel order for your radio. In my case, it's AETR. Um, there's a couple other common ones here, like TAER, for example. Select the one that you're using, because it has to match, otherwise you're going to have all kinds of problems. Um, so that's why that's not selected. Make sure you select that. And then uh, the correct firmware will show up on the bottom part of the screen. You want to go ahead and click that and download that file to your computer. But before you copy that file over to your micro SD card, because so you have to do the upgrade from the micro SD card, you probably want to rename the file to something a little bit shorter because the, the file name you're going to download is really long and it won't show up in the radio as a firmware file that you can upgrade if um, you leave the, the file name really long. So I'll show you what I shortened it to here. So go ahead and Put the uh, copy the file over to your micro SD card. Stick it back into the radio, and we'll go ahead and power it up. Welcome to OpenTX. And we want to go into the radio setup menu here, and go to the right. Go down to firmware. So we're looking at the contents of the SD card here. I'll click into here, and you can see I've previously upgraded to one three zero five three. And just today, 13076 has come out. So, uh, version, new versions seem to come out pretty frequently nowadays. Uh, they're adding more protocols and more features and fixing bugs and everything like that. So, you, you want to definitely go back to that website and check uh, current versions because they seem to be upgrading a little bit more frequently now. So, anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to upgrade. I'm on, I'm on uh, 13053 right now. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade to 13076. So, we're going to select the, fi the file that we want and then we're going to long press the enter button, you get this menu here. So you can set flash internal multi, external multi, and you obviously you want to flash internal multi here. So go ahead and select that. And we'll do a device reset and it will go ahead and write the new firmware. So you can see I shortened the name of my file here to this here. Basically just uh, the version number so you can know which ones are which. And if you want to go back to an older version you could do that too as well. Okay, so you get a message says flash successful, and it should exit out of there. And just to double check, if we go into our model here, and this is uh, using the FreeSky D8 protocol, you can see now we're on version 13076, and AETR is the channel uh, order on my particular radio. That's the, the, the uh, firmware version that I downloaded. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. Um, yeah, just go to that website, it's really, you know, you just have to make sure you select the correct ones for your particular situation, download the file, and don't forget to change the, or shorten the name of the file, otherwise you won't see it, it won't show up in the, uh, when you go to the actual um, firmware folder, it'll just be, um, basically nothing will be there, so make sure you don't forget to do that, <laughs> that actually threw me for a loop, I was like, where's the file, I know I, I, know I saved it in there, and then I realized you had to shorten the file, so. That's pretty much it. That's the only thing that was a hitch, and otherwise it worked pretty good. You can see it's pretty simple. It takes about uh, 10 seconds, 15 seconds to flash, and you're on the new version. That's, that's all you gotta do. Anyway, guys, if you have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.